Last time we saw the basic of the NPN and PNP transistor and NPN transistor as a low side switch. This time we'll see how a PNP transistor can be used as a high side switch. So let's start. Well, we can use an NPN transistor as a high side switch as well. But using it is not an easy job. Because to turn on the NPN BJT, we need to provide at least points and volts to the base of the NPN transistor. And we'll apply that to an NPN high side switch and let's see whether it works or not. This is a simulation where an NPN transistor is used as a high side switch. If you don't remember what is a high side switch and low side switch, then please check out my previous video by clicking on this card. Now, in this simulation, even if you are given the 1 volt to the base of the BJT, it is still not turning on. Why? We have given the proper voltage, right? Well, there is a small catch over here. We surely gave the base voltage, but to turn on an NPN BJT, we need to give the voltage of points and volts between base and emitter. The potential difference between base and emitter should be at least 0.7 volts. In our case, the emitter is not connected to the ground. It is floating. So even if we give 1 volt as a base voltage, it will not turn on. Because the base to emitter voltage difference is not as per the minimum requirement, which is at least 0.7 volts. The input voltage is 6 volts. Now let's give the 7 volt as a base voltage and we will see the simulation. If you notice, the BGD has turned on. So in this case, the emitter is at 6 volts and the base is at 7 volts. So the potential difference between base and emitter is 1 volt. That's why this transistor has turned on. However, this is a simulation, but in real world application, the input voltage is 6 volts itself. Then how we can get a supply of 7 volts in the actual circuit? We'll have to make one more power supply which will complicate the circuit. Or to get that, there are several methods of high side switching as well, which are also complicated and costly. So instead of going with this approach, we can use a PNP BJT. Unlike NPN transistors, we don't have to provide points and volts base voltage with respect to the ground for PNP transistors. In fact, when the PNP transistor is connected in the circuit, the base of the transistor should be connected to the ground so that the BJT turns on. Keeping that in mind, we can use a PNP transistor. Let's consider we have to turn on a full system using a switch and an MCU. In this case, we have to use an electronic switch like a transistor. So we'll use a PNP transistor to connect it like this in the circuit, where the emitter is connected to the supply and collector is connected to the load side. First now, the load is a CCR, which is driving an LED with 0.5 amperes current. Now, as we know, to turn on PNP transistor, its base should be pulled to the ground. So we can use another NPN BJT and its collector should be connected to the base of the PNP BJT and the emitter should be grounded. So that when we turn on this transistor, the base of the PNP transistor connects to the ground. So this is the basic concept. Now to use it in a circuit, we have to add some resistors in order to get the circuit working efficiently. We'll use 4 resistors for this application, where R1 and R3 are the current limiting resistors of the Q2 and Q1 respectively. The Q2 can be a general purpose transistor BC547, which has a collector current capacity of 100 mA. But the PNP transistor which we are choosing must handle the load current. In our case, the load current is 0.5 amperes. So we'll use a PNP transistor which can handle at least this much current. So when we turn on the transistor Q2, 
the base of the Q1 gets grounded through the resistor R3 and Q2 which turns on the Q1 transistor. Once the transistor Q1 is turned on, the current flows through the circuit and circuit completes. But when we give low pulse to the Q2, that means if we turn it off, the base of the Q1 disconnects from the ground and to avoid any middle state, we have added R4 as a pull-up resistor for the Q1. So the base of the Q1 is pulled to the logic high when it is supposed to be turned off. In our case, we will connect it to the input voltage. And due to this, the transistor Q1 turns off, which cuts out the power of circuit. This type of circuitry is very useful in many applications for turning on the electrical loads in a DC application. Let's see a small simulation of this circuit as well. The circuit is constructed as per our discussion. The load for us is a CCR. If you want to know more about this CCR, please check this video by clicking on this card. Now we give a pulse to the transistor Q2 which turns it on. If we see when a pulse is given to the Q2, the current starts flowing to the circuit. As soon as the pulse is gone, the Q1 cuts off the power supply and current stops flowing through the circuit. Well, that's how we can use a PNP transistor as a high set switch in any DC application. We'll see more such application of a BJT in coming videos. Till then, stay tuned. I hope you got something from this. If you haven't, you can watch the video again. Still, if you don't, you can ask your doubts in the comment box below. Hit the like button if you like this video, subscribe to my channel, and finally, thanks for watching.